A rectangular prism has a volume of 12. A new prism is formed by doubling the length, doubling the width, and tripling the height. The volume of the new prism is. So length times width times height is the original volume calculation. And now what they're saying is that you are find, finding the volume by doubling the length, so not 2L, doubling the width, 2W, and tripling the height. Okay, when you multiply those numbers, you get 2 times 2 times 3, which is 12. And then this L times W times H. Well, this guy we already know is 12 from here. So it just becomes 12 times 12, which is 144. And then for number 11, the answer is E. Morgan uses a spreadsheet to create a table of values. In the first column, she lists the positive integers from 1 to 400. She then puts integers in the second column in the following way. If the integer in the first column of the given row is n, the number in the second column is 3n plus 1. Which of the following integers does not appear in the second column? Okay. Let's make these columns and let's see what happens. So this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way down to 400, right? And then 3n plus 1, so let's do this. This should be pretty quick. 4, uh, 7, 10, 13, and then all the way down to 1,201, I believe. Okay, so what they're saying is, which of these guys in the answer choices does not appear in that second column, in this column right here? Okay, well, all of these numbers in the second column are in the form 3n plus 1. So a multiple of 3 plus 1. So let's see. I think all of these are, th this is 30 plus 1, which is, you know, obviously a multiple of 3, 93 plus 1, 330 plus 1, and 906 plus 1. But this one if you did 130 plus 1, it doesn't work because 130 is not a multiple of 3. Because 130 divided by 3 is not an integer. It's like 43.3 or something. So C does not appear in that second column. On February 1st, it was 16.2 uh, Celsius outside Jacinta's house at 3 p.m. on February 2nd. It was minus 3.6 Celsius outside Jacinta's house at 2 a.m. If the temperature changed at a constant rate between these times, the rate at which the temperature decreased was. So we're going from 16.2 to minus 3.6. So that means we are going down 19.8 uh, Celsius. And over what time period? 3 p.m. on, on February 1st, to 2 a.m. on February 2nd. So February 1, 3 p.m. and then February 2, 2 a.m. 2 a.m. So that lives 9 plus 2, 10 hours. So we take this 19.8 Celsius and divide by 10 hours and when you do you get uh, uh, hold on, 9 plus 2, sorry, sorry, <laughs> 9 plus 2 is 11 hours. Aha, uh -huh. good thing I caught that. And when you do this, it's 1.8. Yeah, so 13 is B, as long as you don't make any silly mistakes like I just did. Each of the four doors in is randomly opened or closed. What is the probability that exactly two of the four doors are open? Okay. So we have four doors, and we want exactly two open. So there's a few ways of doing this. You can have open, open, closed, closed, open, closed, open, closed, open, closed, closed, open, and then open, 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 like that, and then just fill in the closed. And I think this covers it six ways. Now, for any probability question, the numerator is the specific condition, which we just figured out was six, but the denominator is the total number of cases. The total number of cases, since every door has a two possible choices, uh, op options, open or closed, there's two possible choices for each door, and then you mul multiply them together, and that's going to be 16. So that's the total number of ways that they could be opened or closed, and that's the probability, which in lowest terms would be 3 over 8. So 14 is 8.
Nassim buys trading cards in packages of five cards and in packages of eight cards. He can purchase exactly 18 cards by buying two five packs and one eight pack, but he cannot purchase exactly 12 cards with any combination of packages. For how many of the integers n from 24 to 29 can he buy exactly n cards? So let's see here, 24, he could do that with three packs of eight. 25, he could do that with five packs of five. 26, uh, two packs of five, which would give me 10, and then two packs of eight, which would give an additional 16, leading to 26. 27, I don't think can be done. 28, four packs of five, and one pack of eight. And 29, one pack of five, and three packs of eight. So five of these numbers, one, two, three, four, five, can be achieved. Uh, and therefore, number 15 is A. At the start of the month, Matilde and Sala each had 100 coins. For Matilde, this was 25% more coins than she had at the start of the last month. For Sala, this was 20 percent fewer coins than she had at the start of the month the total number of coins that they had at the start of the last month was okay so m and s so they have what a hundred now so matilde it's um tw this was 25 percent more than what she had at the start of last month so and then sarah is, tw is uh 20 percent fewer so x represents what she had last month that means that uh, 0.8 of x is 100. Yeah, because to go from here to here, uh, yeah, because it's saying that 20% fewer coins, the 100 represents 20% fewer coins than what she had at the start of last month. Uh, yeah, that's so, so if you solve for this, x would be 125. Yeah, I just got to make sure I don't screw this up. Okay, so then the same kind of story here. But uh, Matilde, the 100 represents 25% more coins. So 25% more, I believe, is uh, 1.25x. Well, that's y, let's say, is 100. Is that right? Yeah. So this would give me that y is 80. Okay, so then they're saying the total number of coins they had at the start, so that 80 plus that 125 would total 205. So number 16, the answer is E. In a survey, 100 students were asked if they like lentils and were also asked if they like chickpeas. A total of 68 students like lentils, total of 53 like chickpeas, a total of six like neither lentils nor chickpeas. How many of the 100 students like both? Okay, so we will draw what is known as a Venn diagram. And, it, and I will explain what a Venn diagram is. So we've got two circles, and the first circle represents um, well, lentils, let's say. And the second circle represents chickpeas. Now, the entire circle is how many people, um, you know, eat or like uh, lentils. And the entire circle on the other side is chickpeas. But then this overlapped region is how many like both. So I'll just put both in there. And that's what we're trying to figure out. So we'll just call it, uh, we'll call it B for both, right? Okay, now let's see what information they give us to help us. A total of uh, 68 students like lentils. So the whole circle here is 68. Now, this part is a B, so I'll just call this part A. So that means A plus B is 68. Okay? And then, very similarly, this whole circle represents how many people like chickpeas. And they're saying that's 53, so I'll put a C there. So B plus C is six, uh, 53. Yeah. 
And then they're saying that 6 like neither. So 6 is out here. So if 6 is out there, then a plus b plus c has to be the complement of that. So that means it's 100 minus 6, which is 94. And I think that's pretty decent uh, amount of information to be able to figure out the value for b. Yeah. Okay. Well, a plus b plus c is 94. Well, a plus b is 68, so I can put 68 plus c is 94. And then c turns out to be 26. And then plug that back into here. So b plus 26 is 53. And that would lead to b uh, is uh, 27. And therefore, number 17 is b. In the diagram, A, B, D, F, and G lie on a vertical line. Triangle B, C, D is right angled at C, and triangle D, E, F is right angled at E. Also, angle A, B, C is X degrees, angle C, D, E is 80, and E, F, G is Y. What is the value of X plus Y? Okay, so we're going to have to chase this. angle. This is known as angle chasing. Okay, so let's do it. This angle in here, that guy, is 180 minus y, right? And then this angle in here, uh, let's just call it uh, a for now. Well, a plus that 90 plus that 180 minus y all total up to 180. And when you solve for a, you will get a is equal to y minus 90. So that a is y minus 90. And then very similarly, that angle in there would be 180 minus x. This angle in there. So that angle, we can call it uh, b, let's say. And again, very similarly, 180 minus x plus 90 plus b is uh, equal to 180 since all the angles add up to 180 in a triangle. And that gives me b is equal to x minus 90. So this is going to be x minus 90. And then what they want is the value of x plus y. Okay, well, uh, how are we going to do that? Well, we can just look at this straight line right here, uh, these three angles. The b, the 80, and the a. Those three would add up to 180. So the b plus the 80 plus the a would add up to 180. So the B is uh, X minus 90. Then we have the 80. And then we have the A, which is Y minus 90. And that's 180. And then that equation, let's see here, that's going to give me X plus Y is equal to uh, 180 plus 180 minus 80. And that, I believe, is 280. And that's what they want in x plus y, so 18 is d. Ellie's drawer of hair clips contains four red clips, five blue clips, and seven green clips. Each morning, she randomly chooses one hair clip to wear for the day. She returns this clip to the drawer each evening. On morning, one morning, Kaini removes K hair clips before Ellie can make her daily dis selection. As a result, the probability that Ellie chooses a red clip is doubled. What, which of the following is a possible value of K? Okay, so we have 4R, 5B, and 7G. So the probability initially of choosing a red is 4 over the total. 4 plus 5 plus 7 is 16. So 4 over 16, which is 1 quarter, is the original probability that Ellie will choose a uh, red clip. Now they're saying that after Kanye removes some hair clips, the probability doubles. So if you double a quarter, you get 2 over 4, which is 1 half. So we want the probability to be half. And then we have to figure out how to do that. Okay, let's see here. These two total 12, 
So I can get a half if I have four over eight. Four red over a total of eight. That would give me a half, right? Now to get a total of eight, the total was originally 16. I would have to remove eight. So for example, if I remove four Bs, I'd get one B left. And if I remove four Gs, I'd have three Gs left. And therefore the total will be four plus one plus three. Yeah, that would work. So that means I removed eight. Now eight is not one of the answer choices, interestingly. I guess that's why they're saying which of the following is a possible value of k, because I guess there's more than one answer. Okay, so we got to think about this again. Um, okay, oh uh, boy, let's see. I was hoping that was the answer. Uh, let's try, how about if I, I'm trying to get one half as my probability, right? So how about if I remove, hmm, let's remove some of the R's and let's see what happens. If I remove two R's, then I have two R's left. And then if I removed uh, 10 of these guys, which is the B's and the G's, the blues and the greens, I'll have two left. So then the probability would therefore be two R, there's two R's over a total of four, because there's two here and two here. And that is a half. So how many did I remove? I removed 2 and 10, which is a total of 12. And 12 is one of the answer choices. So there you go. A little bit of fiddling around, and you can get the right answer. Four larger circles with radius 5 are arranged so that their centers are the vertices of a square. Each of the larger circles is tangent to two of the other circles as shown. A smaller circle with radius r is drawn in the region between the four larger circles. The smaller circle is tangent to each of the larger circles. The value of r is closest to. Okay, so let's label this. This line right here goes right through. And let's draw a diagonal like that. Oh, that's not a good one. All right, so now we got to figure this out. Let's label this. So this little triangle in here, that guy. I'll, dr I'll draw it out here, actually, a little bit better. So from here to here, that's 5. From here to here, that's 5. And this is 5 plus R. And you can clearly see that from the diagram, because that's 5. They told me that. This is 5. And this little guy in here is R, because it's the radius. So this is just Pythagoras. 5 squared plus 5 squared is 5 plus R squared. So that's 25 plus 25, so that's 50. Is 5 plus R squared. And then that's root 50 is 5 plus r. And therefore, r is equal to root 50 minus 5. And then, they're, oh, they're saying r is closest to They actually want you to figure out the numerical value, which is about 2.07. So that's closest to 2.1. So therefore, 20 is c.